rejuvenation of Lori's dollhouse continues. And the reason we call it rejuvenation is because we bought a house that needs a little bit of fixing. We didn't buy a fixer. Really just a little bit of spit and polish is all that's needed. And today's project, we're gonna focus on this area right here. And what you're looking at is 134 years of just ultraviolet radiation from the sun, just absolutely killing these layers and layers of paint. And uh, you can see the dead uh, window glazing there as well. So at first my thought was, I'm gonna use this chemical stripper. And this is a fairly non-caustic stripper. Um, it worked okay. And it took about two days to take about half of the paint off of one window. So lots of time uh, applying, scraping, waiting, applying, waiting, scraping, and then it just, it just didn't work. So what I had to do is resort to pure muscle. And when I used this paint scraper, I was able to do one window in about six minutes. And you can see here that it worked just fine on the window frames as well. So really just a little bit of muscle and, a, and some tolerance for a mess. And there you have it. And of course, because it's most likely lead paint, I do always wear protection and I do recommend that. So after lots of brute strength and a little bit of cleanup with sandpaper, we're ready to apply several layers of fresh paint. And I just used a bare paint and a primer exterior paint all in one. And that seemed to work okay for this project. As you saw, the glazing was absolutely toast from, once again, I think the ultraviolet radiation from the sun and just time. I mean, this house is, is very old. I applied the window glazing and what I didn't know is this stuff takes like two weeks to completely cure. So it's really soft. Uh, it, it is just like Play-Doh and pretty easy to apply and then uh, fairly easy to shape and form into place. And that's gonna hold that window tight, but also create a weather type barrier. So here's a random semi pro tip for you. This was uh, something I encountered during this project. But if you have a screw, let's say in your house or an old piece of furniture and uh, the hole is just stripped out, all it needs is just a little bit of material in the hole to kind of shim that hole up and give that screw something to hold on to. So here I'm using a toothpick. If it were a larger hole, maybe a matchstick would work as well. Of course, take the, the match head off. But the toothpick worked great here, and you can see the screw has now something to bite into and pull that, uh, that trim piece tight. When you have a project like this, it really is like opening up a, a can of worms. And here what I found was many of these windows had lost their counterbalance rope. So that balance or that weight is there to counterbalance the weight of the window to make them easy to go up and down. And these ropes over time, they break. So I did have to restring quite a few of the ropes uh, and a little bit of WD-40 on the pulleys. And now the windows um, operate really smoothly uh, in their channels. Or as I like to say, they operate now as designed. And here's a quick before picture, and you can just see it was old and nasty. And that's just the best description, old and nasty. And here's a quick look of after. So nice, fresh, white paint, not 74,000 layers, just a few coats of paint. And once again, to protect the paint as we move forward, so I don't have to do this again because I don't want to do it again because it was time consuming. Um, I have a saying, do it once, do it right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some ultraviolet radiation blocking on the outer storm windows. So that is the first line of defense. And it's kind of what I think has created the lens for that sun to beat down and do all that damage. So I think moving forward, I think we've got a solid project and I won't have to do it again. So there you have it. We'll see you next time.